Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Eon. This is Five Slow Stroke in the podcast. We're about to get into some supply and demand, dealing with cryptos, um, commodities, NFTs, and all that. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned. All right, son. What's good? Like I said, it's your boy Eon. You already know me, and this is Forever Slow Stroke in the podcast, episode forty-one, son. We came a long way. And I am so pleased to uh, still have the honor to sit here and, you know, give the podcast, you know, for those who listen to it, right? So I do want to go into some things and talk about supply and demand, right? Supply and demand in all markets is so important. If you don't know what that is, you know, you really need to do some research on what supply and demand is, right? But before I really dive into it, I really want to say, please, if you are enjoying the content at any you know rate you know what i'm saying please like and subscribe son and also understand that me myself i am not a financial advisor so all this information that's being provided is for your educational and entertainment purposes right so to fill those needs anything that you take and use for you know investment or trading you know perspective that's all on you right forever slow stroke and, and eon bryant is not responsible for that right so yes yeah, son, i just wanted to let that be known <clears throat> so in continuation, so supply and demand, right? Supply and demand is pretty much what rules the market. You kind of have to have uh, this thing where you understand what people want, what people need, and if it's available, if it's readily attainable, right? That's what makes supply and demand really, really, really valid, right? And you always want to be valid in any investment, any trade, any anything you do, even with your career, you want to make sure that you're making valid moves. You want to make sure that you're putting your time and you're allocating your energy into the right things, right? <clears throat> so, um, so when it comes to demand, right, you kind of want to look at things that have a finite supply. So let's go into um, what has finite supply, right? So number one, I'm going to talk about these cryptos, right? Cryptos, most of them have to be mined. And basically what mining is, is when you go and, you know, you not fully fabricate, but you, you create, you know, a cryptocurrency based off of some type of digital information, right? So companies such as Riot, Marathon, Canon, um, they do the mining, right? And there's other companies that do mining, um, but crypto mining. So basically, by something being mined, um, it shows that the product can't be, you know, replicated, right? Or reproduced. It can only be found. It can only be found. So you can't just sit here and be like, oh, we ran out of Bitcoin. Let's make more Bitcoin. You can't make more Bitcoin. Either you have Bitcoin or you don't have Bitcoin, right? Either you have Ethereum or you don't have Ethereum. So that's pretty much uh, how it works. And number two, I want to go into gold. Gold, along with, you know, cryptocurrencies, can't be recreated. You know what I'm saying? Because these are something these are things that are mine gold is mine there's a finite amount of gold so that's why gold is so expensive because there's a limit on how much gold is available and obviously there's more gold you know in the in the earth than you know we you know have currently but you know you have to go find it you have to go find those things right it's not like a diamond where you could go and you know create it in a lab you could create a diamond you could create a beautiful diamond but you can't create gold. Gold is something that, you know, it's there. Either it's gold or it's not gold. And, of course, you have your different carats of gold. Uh, you have your 10 carat, your 14 carat, um, 24 carat, 18 carat. Um, so all these different, you know, types of gold, right? And typically most gold, you'll, it'll say 0.999, you know, on the gold, you know, bars and things like that. So just be mindful of that, right? So... As I mentioned, you know what I'm saying, um, in the previous episode that I did when I spoke on NFTs, you know, they are becoming hot, right? And this is number three, NFTs. So NFTs are hot, and most NFTs are unique to an extent, right? So basically, some of them are one of one, and some of them have many, and you can have more moments, right? Depending on what it is, or you can have more art pieces, you can have more music, but for the most part, NFTs are, you know, created to be uh, unique, right? It's a non-fungible token. That's what it stands for. That's what the, uh, you know, the letters NFT stands for. So 
NFTs can be created, but when they're created, they typically have a finite supply. Now, if you go to Nike Topshop, they have some moments, right? And moments are like uh, pretty much, you know, it's a highlight. They have these highlights of, you know, NBA plays. So in these moments or highlights, however you want to see it, um, some of them, you can, they can keep, you know, re, you know, not recreating the moment itself, but, you know, re, um, what is it called? remaking that little snippet or clip right for people to buy so the more people that can buy this clip the less expensive that clip is because at the end of the day nobody wants the things that everybody can readily obtain you don't want something that's readily attainable all right so let's go let's go into this right um let me give you a better perspective right son so think about this designer clothes right designer clothes they're cool they're cool when you can just buy them and wear them right but at the end of the day anybody can buy designer clothes if you have credit or you have cash right but typically you're not going to be able to resell that designer clothes for more than that designer article more than you you pay for it why because i mean once you wear it i mean some things i ain't gonna lie some things such as you know some of those nike drops or you know, those special limited edition Nikes like the Dior ones or whatever, you know, the Travis Scott. Sometimes you can have a nice um, resale value, but the supply on those shoes are so low that it drives the demand up, right? This is where supply and demand comes into play. That's why supply and demand will really make, understanding this will really make you wealthy, you know, in life because you'll have an understanding of, dang son, all I have to do is just get something that a lot of people can't get, you know, maybe they can't afford to get it or maybe they just can't get their hands on it because there's not enough of it to go around, such as, you know, Jordans. Son, we here with it, you know what I'm saying? So designer clothes, right? This is something that's readily attainable. But, you know, a lot of people can't get it. What do you mean, Eon? You know, why are you saying that? It sounds like the same thing. So they make a lot of designer clothes, but a lot of people just can't afford to do it. You know what I'm saying? If they're living within their means. Next, what am I talking about? Fancy homes. A lot of people can't afford a four-bedroom, three-bathroom home with a two-car garage. Why? Because it's expensive. Homes are cost several hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? If you're just buying it, you know, in a in a standard market and you're not, you know, a retail, um, if you're a retail, right? And you're not buying it like uh, at a wholesale price. So fancy homes, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people go crazy on them because, you know, you can buy them if you have the money, but a lot of people don't have the money for them. Next, luxury vehicles. Luxury vehicles, a lot of people want a luxury vehicle, but they can't buy one, right? You can't buy one, which makes, you know, um, the prices so expensive for the cars. In addition to that, they only make a certain amount of cars because of the quality that they make that car at, you know what I'm saying? That high quality, right? And there's so many mores, but um, the way to be successful in this is to just figure out the demand and determine your supply. So you got to figure out, you know, what the world wants and then... You figure out how much of it can you make, and you just try your best not to overproduce, right? Um, so, yeah, son, that's that. Now, let's go ahead and get into, you know, my my trading progress for, you know, um, April the 1st, 2021. We had a short week, a four-day week. So, um, I did 5% profit on Riot, 97% profit on Boeing, 50% profit on Zoom, 1% profit on Boeing, 30% profit on Discovery A... A 16% profit from Discovery A, 30% profit from Discovery A, 22% profit from Chewy, 0% profit from Costco, which means I, I didn't take a loss and I didn't make money either. I broke even. 14% um, profit from Marathon, 10% um, profit from Microsoft, and a 50% loss from Spy. So that was the week. Now, the hidden gem, son. Let's uh, go ahead and get into that, right, son? So, hidden gem. Travel and these different reopening stocks are set to boom, right? But I think crypto is getting hot. So I'm expecting, you know, a big leap in crypto over the summer. So I would really pay attention to Ethereum. Ethereum is used in a lot of the NFT spaces, right? Ethereum's huge. I think Ethereum has a better, um, you know, uh, use case than Bitcoin itself. So I'm very bullish on Ethereum. And um, also, I want to say this. If you haven't done so, please check out Jermaine's Hustle Class. Go check it out on Apple Music or whatever. 
I mean, Apple <laughs> Podcast, not music. But son, that's all I got for y'all. You already know me. It's Eon, but I gotta go. Oof.